What city in Texas? Dallas, Fort Worth. Twin Market. Well, David Letterman, I am. <laughs> Pardon me? Oh, all right. Well, David Letterman, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I am one of the few people, I think, who stays up late enough to see you, and I still get up to see the Today Show. Boy, oh boy. That's I sleep very fast. Yeah, yeah, and nothing to be proud of, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> David, on the scale of, say, poor to excellent, how do you think the show is doing? Uh, it's a dismal failure. I'd have to say it's one of the worst projects I've ever been involved in in my life, and uh, I think it's doing fine. I'm very pleased with it. Are there some things that you're changing or, you know, things that you're saying, well, that's not the direction we should be going? You know, are you going through those kinds <laughs> of growing pains? Um, it's, it's growing. I, I, I hesitate to call them pains because I think if you're doing a show that's on the air nightly or four nights a week, that uh, it's impossible for it to be static. Uh, it has to be changing. It has to be uh, fluctuating up and down and, and uh, it's just a continual sorting process. You find things that work two or three times so you'll continue uh, with that kind of thing. You find things that don't work and, and logic dictates that you don't continue with those things. So it's, um, I don't think it's necessarily a sorting out project. I just think that that is the nature of, of a show like this. I don't know whose idea it was to have the elevator races, for instance. Was that your idea? No, ma'am. That idea was uh, the idea of our head writer, Meryl Marco, uh, who she worked on the daytime show that I did for NBC a couple of years ago, and she wanted to do it then, and and no one took her seriously, uh, and so I don't know how she was able to convince uh, people that it was the thing to do, and I'm not sure that it is the thing to do, but uh, we've done it uh, two or three times, and it. Uh, I like it because it provides uh, a real air of silliness and just pointless behavior to the show. <laughs> <laughs> and and any time I can be involved in something that's silly and pointless, well, sign me up, you know. And uh, I enjoy it. Are there some things, though, David, you've <coughs> turned down saying, that's just too silly or I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that? Well, if you've watched the show, you know it would be a short list. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there are, th there are things. I can't remember what they are now, but uh, uh, generally, again, with a show like this, you've got to have the attitude of, we'll give it a shot once and, and see what happens. I, I, c I know of one thing in particular that I tried uh, and just uh, regret it almost to this day uh, because it was, again, it was pointless and it was silly, but it didn't, it just didn't have, I don't know what it didn't have, but uh, so we'll, we'll try things occasionally that don't work. You have to tell me now what it was. It was something called Dave's Hobby Shop, and um, it was, <laughs> we got some people out of the audience and had them tie flies for 60 minutes. <laughs> and if you've ever had your tie flied, you know how painful that can be. Um, <laughs> and, and I still don't know what the point of that was, but uh, uh, we had a sign that said Dave's Hobby Shop. We had, had props, we had lighting, I think we had music, and it was just, it was stupid. Nothing, nothing happened, nothing was going to happen. And it was a, h a hideous waste of videotape. It was, an, it was overproduced, David, that's what it Yeah, was. So I think that was probably the answer. <laughs> <laughs> David, of course, people are speculating that if Johnny Carson should leave for whatever reason, that you are there in the wings to take over that time slot. True? Uh, I don't even know that people are speculating. Uh, I think whenever Johnny Carson, uh, it's just it's sort of a, a television ritual. Whenever Johnny Carson gets ready to negotiate his contract, they get out the list of people who may be available to replace him. And it goes, well, Richard Dawson, Robert Klein, well, Letterman, and, you know, I'm just on that list. And I think that's the extent of the speculation. But you'd like that if you were chosen? Oh, no, no. I think that would be a short trip. Are you serious? Yeah. You would not want to take that time slot? No. Would you? <laughs> no, I want, I want no part of that one. No, it's just, uh, no, I don't think so. Let, let a couple other guys go in there and try it for a while and, and call me at, at that point. I got you. All right. Larry Bud Melman. I have been trying to find out where this guy comes from, who he is, 
and we get answers like uh, he's a reformed alcoholic that you've taken care of, that, that he's a mushroom picker you found in Central Park, that he delivers coffee, that he was an NBC messenger, you know, which of the above? Uh, those are all good stories, uh, and, and none of those are true to my knowledge, and I know precious little about the man and, and have uh, uh, explained to him that I will not discuss his life on or off the silver screen. Uh, without first talking to him, and, and he's the kind of guy you don't want to talk to. So uh, uh, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't shed more light on this than that. Why all this secrecy about him? I, he may be in the country illegally. There is. We've heard that. <laughs> he may have been connected with Robert Vesco, uh, but we're not sure about that either. But uh, he's he's a curious fellow. I'll tell you that. And uh, and we don't go out socially. Um, and I don't know much more about him than that. So meanwhile, he wants to hide out on the David Letterman show. Well, I do know, I do know that it's a financial deal with NBC and RCA and himself. He, he's apparently uh, a man of means, and at a time when RCA needed some bucks, he came in and, and uh, signed a blank check, and in return for that, he gets to appear on uh, certain of their shows. And I think he's going to be on a couple episodes of Chips uh, this fall. And that's all I know about him. Okay, well, at least we're, we're on to something <laughs> now, David. We know he's not a mushroom no. picker. Okay, David, nice having this chance nice to talk with you, you here. Or nice, not actually, talking with you, too. I didn't really have you, did I? It was nice <laughs> having this chance to talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly sorry. <laughs> Good, David. <laughs>